The date time class in the .NET framework can sometimes be a little awkward to work with, especially if you really don't need the time component. Maybe you just need a date. Nota Time is a great open source library that tries to address some of these issues. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Today's episode, we're going to take a look at the fusion of Entity Framework and Noda Time. Yes. So as I was saying in the intro, um, you know, like sometimes you're dealing with something and you don't really need the time component of it. You're really just talking about a date. And if you look at the the column types, for example, in SQL Server, they actually have a date column type that just stores the date, just year, month, day, and there's no time component to it. So an example that I have of that is something like a public holiday. So if you think about public holidays like we have here in Canada, something like Canada Day that happens on July 1st, uh, you, if you were storing those and building a system that was dealing with public holidays, you probably wouldn't want to store a time component to it. Even if you try to translate things to UTC time, uh, that gets tricky because when does Canada Day start? Well, it kind of depends which province you're in. Uh, we have six time zones in Canada, I think. Uh, so the time, five or six, some number of time zones, it's more than one. Uh, but the time at which Canada Day starts will depend on where you are. So Nota Time, this library that I've added to this project, if we take a look at the NuGet packages that I've referenced here, let's just look at the csproj file. So I've only added two packages to this .NET Core 3.1 app, uh, Entity Framework Core SQL Server, and Nota Time. So Nota Time has this, uh, this structure called a local date. And actually what happens if we dig into that? Local date has a lot of methods on it, uh, but it, it really just has the three parts to it in terms of the data. There's year, month, day, and era. What is and an era? the system. Interesting, very smart. So era will be like BCE, before the Christian era. Yeah. Uh, and then calendar system, there's a wide range of different calendar systems, probably the, most well known in sort of like North American circles are the Gregorian and the Julian calendars, but there are of course lunar calendars and all sorts of other fun ways that mankind has come up with for tracking time. Very cool. Well, maybe <laughs> very complicated. These do pose challenges for us programmers at times. Uh, but what I've done here is I have public holiday it's this very simple entity, an ID, a name, and a date. And what I've created is a holidays database context here that just has a DB set of public holidays. And don't ever do this, but I've seeded that database inside of my constructor. So it just goes and checks to see if I have any public holidays defined yet. And if not, then it goes and adds a bunch of them. So that's just how I'm getting the data in there. But things like New Year's happening on July 1st, so these are all the public holidays for 2020 for Canada, or for yeah, for the our country. We have our random August day off. We have James Chambers Day. We celebrate the national treasure that is James Chambers. <laughs> with fireworks across the country. Okay, so when we run this, again, there's that local date property so that we're only storing date. When I run this, um, I actually expect it to crash. So we're going to see the places, as I go through this, we're going to see the places where it breaks by default, and then we're just going to see what we need to do to fix it to get it working. So here it's telling me the property date could not be mapped. Property public holiday dot date cannot be mapped because it, it is of type local date, which is not a supported primitive. So Entity Framework Core doesn't know how to, by default, how to map local date. Okay. So that's fine. We can handle that. Uh, Entity Framework core has this concept of value conversions. So we just have to go and configure that. So what I'm going to do here is override the model creating. Model creating. And then we tell it for our entity model builder, 
or entity. Public holiday. So we tell it that for the property, I seem to be having an off by one error on my keyboard today. So for property okay. date, we're going to configure, we're going to tell it it has the conversion. And then in that conversion, we're going to pass it a value converter. So we actually have to go and create that value converter. So for that, we just say new value converter. And then we tell it how to get between those two dates. So we're going from local date to date time. Because date time is the thing that SQL, that entity framework knows about. So even though it's a date field, we can still convert it to a date time? Yeah. So we're going to convert it to a date time uh, and just always have the time part of it as 000. zero, zero. Uh, so what we do is we say from the local date, we're going to say to date time unspecified. So that's a method on the local date uh, structure or class. So to date time unspecified, uh, date times within .NET have this concept of unspecified where you you don't, you're not telling it that it's a local time or a UTC time. It's just an unspecified time. It doesn't really have a, like a time zone associated with it. Um, and then when we're coming back from the database, we're going to say uh, we're going to be getting a date. And we're going to say new local date. No, we're going to say local date dot from date time. And that's it. Now we we could do this and it would this would work. Local uh, date converter. Yeah, I have to actually give it the right variable name. So I could do that; it would work. Uh, but at this point, it's going to store it as a date time two in SQL Server. So it'll still it'll always be the beginning of the day, but it's going to look like a date time within the database. So mm -hmm. maybe not what we want, but we can just tell it here. We can say it has column type of date. Okay, so now we can run this and it should work. We should be able to store that data in the database and get references back. And all I'm doing in my UI while that's loading up is I just have uh, a list here. I'm just listing out the dates the, and doing a two string on the date and the public holiday name. So just listing out all the public holidays the usual type of stellar UI that we build in these demos. <laughs> and the two string on here has like the similar formatting options that you have with dates in, in .NET with date time. Uh, so I could give it the short date pattern, uh, but I do always have to give it the culture info dot whatever culture it is that we're trying to format that as. And I just have to restart this. So that will just format the date slightly differently. Okay. So that's all working well. Uh, let's see if now we can start querying by the date. So if I come into my index page where this date is being displayed, all I'm doing here on the on get is saying, uh, give me a list of all the holidays. But maybe I want all the holidays since, or like all the upcoming holidays, the ones that haven't happened yet this year. So then I, I might do something like dot where p dot date is greater than or equal to. Uh, now what do we do? I'd want to do a local date dot from date time. Try something like that. Let's just see what happens. We could construct a date time any way we wanted, but let's just see what happens when we do this. I'm suspicious that it might not work. Oh, what gave you that suspicion? Well, I feel like you wouldn't have used this as a part of the presentation if it was going to work. So it didn't work. And this is an issue with trying to translate the code I've written here into 
SQL. So it's trying to like parse that expression and translate it into SQL. And it doesn't like that. So let's see if we can maybe just structure it a little bit differently. What if we extracted that out to here? And we just passed in today. So now it's just a local date time. But will it know how to convert that at least to something in SQL? Hooray, it worked. So this actually didn't work in Entity Framework Core 2 dot anything. So it's something that must have happened in the 3.0 or 3.1 release where uh, they were able to, so anything that we have configured in our model with a value converter, they're now able to actually convert here as well using that value converter in a simple query. Whereas before that didn't work it would still, um, even structured this way, it would still crash at runtime. Uh, so this is a really big win. Now it's a lot easier for me to use node time within my uh, in my applications that are using any framework. As long as I've upgraded to 3. something, I actually don't know where, what version that was fixed in, but I'm really happy to see it. Uh, and we can even get a little bit fancier than that. So we could do things like, um, we could say where, it's greater than today, and actually, let's just see if this works because I'm not entirely sure. But let's say it was date time is less than an equal or equal to today dot plus days. Is that going to work in line? Let's say we were looking for things in the next 90 days. Yeah, it feels good. Just fine. Yeah, I'm skeptical for some reason. Oh, that actually did work. Fantastic. Nice. And if we look at, I'll just, so I am logging these down to the console here. So just to confirm that that actually did write a query that, yeah, that looks good. So there were two parameters that it passed in. Uh, today's date, which it did convert to a full date there because of the value converter that we have. Um, but it was looking for date for yeah, today zero was the first parameter, which was today. And then plus days one, they called the second parameter, which was the today plus 90 days. And it passed that in as a parameterized SQL query. So good stuff. I'm really happy to see that this works now without. <clears throat> having to do really weird things. There were workarounds before where I had to write, I had to do all my queries that involve date, local dates as actual like SQL queries and then mapping them back to entities um, or having to install other uh, NuGet libraries that tried to do some of this link expression parsing, which is not an easy task for anybody to, to quite get right, so. Mm -hmm. I'm still a little bit sad that it is a runtime error. I know. I, my feeling is, looking at this, that you could probably write an analyzer to catch this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah I I'd, I'd, have to look, I'd have to look in more detail, but it's it, it feels like it might be feasible to write an analyzer around this to catch it. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of projects are starting to ship analyzers now, so that would be probably be a really useful one, because I would love to push those sorts of errors left a little bit. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I've if you can, that was something with the Entity Framework 3 release that really bothered me because a lot of the run, a lot of the breaking changes you didn't know about till runtime it would be things like this, where it was like a specific link expression that used to work fine, doesn't translate to SQL anymore for some reason, but you don't find out until runtime, which is a really mm -hmm. painful way to, to try to uh, test your app in terms of if the upgrade worked. Yeah, definitely. Because it, like, if you were testing against an in-memory DB context, it probably still works, right? Yeah, yeah. I would not recommend testing against an in-memory DB context for that for that reason, yeah. because it's at least just... for that class of error. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's all I had today. Uh, we'll in the next episode where we look at local dates here, we'll look at how 
So everything here is basically running or is running server side because we're doing server rendered pages with razor pages. So the next one we'll look at how you deal with these dates and times if you had a web API that you were exposing data from and a JavaScript front end. Because uh, then you're dealing with JavaScript dates and there's a mismatch between those representations. So that's where things get really interesting. Awesome. That's super exciting. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this timely episode of the ASP NetMonsters. Remember to like, comment, and share no matter what time zone you're in. We'd appreciate it. And we'll see everybody in approximately date time dot now plus seven days. <laughs> Simon, you said it was timely, but I think in this case it was timeless. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe it was dately. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, everyone.